When working on white plaster ceilings or wall materials, you might be tempted to simply leave them, well, even without a shader or with just a very simple white material. And to be honest with you, in our case, that could actually do the trick because if we look at this material here or here, it really looks like there's nothing into it. But quite often, those white surfaces will have very tiny bumps and reflections applied to them as well. So even though we don't necessarily need to do it in our scene, I would still like to show you how you can improve this kind of elements in interior visualization. Let's start our work by separating the ceiling and walls in the viewport and you may remember from the modeling stage, we decided to keep the walls as two separate objects. And now we would actually have to work on it because if we UV map this element independently to this one, then we would have to move those UV islands um, independently and trying to match them. Well, trying to guess match them. As you can see, I have to rotate this UV island, this one is somewhere here. So what I would suggest is simply separating this plane, which I did right now, and this one as well, and now joining them into one object like this, where we can simply remodel the mesh just a little bit. So you can see I have created a new edge loop. Let's now move it to around this point here. Let's activate the snap tool for that. And let's remove doubles. So now we have a well, very simple surface, which we can unwrap and have it nicely aligned here within the UV layout because, well, we need a UV layout. We will apply texture to those elements. So the little details like cracks in the bump are visible. Um, as for the ceiling, let's isolate it. And instead of creating edge loops and working around those very, uh, well, problematic in my opinion, areas here, since these areas I'm selecting right now will be covered by the wooden panels, let me simply select these faces. And again, these area here will be covered by wooden panels, so we can skip that. And with that selection, let me just hit U key and unwrap it. So you can see this also, this is also a way I can unwrap, I can UV map elements. The only thing is I don't have uh, the edge seams marked. So right now, if I will deselect everything and I would like to go back to this exact UV island here, I would need to hand select everything again, which I'm actually going to do. And yeah, this is now pretty nicely mapped. We can scale it up, apply a texture in a second and see how it looks. Let's unhide everything and let's apply a new shader to the ceiling. Let's call it white walls, simple name so we can find it easier. And let's apply the same shader to the wall we just remodeled. So I'm going to type white and it should be here. Let's now isolate the selection again, switch to the look dev view and start working on the material. So I'm going to use the Choco 4 Concrete Solid 06 texture, but instead of plugging it uh, as a base color, I'm going to use it only for roughness and normal. So the color I will set up to 0.95. Maybe for the texture setup, let's again go traditionally with something darker, reduce the roughness, and now add a separate RGB node plug our texture into it and start playing around with the inputs. So this is something we have as a red channel. 
this is the green channel I think it's much better and this is the blue channel this will be a great bump input so let's stick to the green as a roughness so what we are looking for with those white diffuse surfaces is just a little bit of uh, reflection differenti differentiation happening but the, we have to keep in mind that the roughness has to be kept uh, quite high so we need to use a brighter colors let me plug in the color ramp and start by increasing the brightness of this first handle so we have something like that let me just move it slightly here but I'm gonna increase or maybe not maybe it doesn't look that great let's simply increase this color just a bit so you can see we have just those very little reflective elements here and there let's maybe keep 0.6 value as a maximum and 0.85 here I think I still think it might be a little bit too reflective but we'll get back to it let's set up the specular as 0.75 and move to the bump setup right now I'm gonna create a vector bump plug in the blue color and plug in plug the normal to normal set the distance to 0 0.01 traditionally and this is the result I think it's still way way too much so let's only use 10% of the strength maybe 20% yeah I think it's I think it's pretty pretty nice again let's reconnect everything to what we have set up and let's change the color to what we will actually use in the scene so 0.95 I'm gonna switch back to the camera view unhide everything and let's now quickly preview what we have just created to preview the material let's create a border around here and switch to the rendered view I will now go to the render settings performance and viewport as well and switch the pixel size to one because the the effect we are looking for is very subtle and it will be probably barely visible so at first as you can see here we don't really see much and that's a good thing in my opinion because as I mentioned this has to be a very subtle effect but to, to check if it's actually out there let's now reduce the color and go to something darker and let's just focus on this area here maybe zoom in a little bit and you can see we have some color differentiation here I think we again need to invert the bump so it actually goes into the ceiling yeah I think that's actually enough this is this is everything what we are looking for so if we darken the color the reflections the color flickering it's actually there we might need to perhaps increase the um, UV mapping just a little bit so let's increase the UV island by two and check the effect again well now I now I think we can clearly see there's something happening some irregularities within this material so that's I would keep it like this if you still want to adjust it again we can use the RGB curves here and just by creating a one point in the middle moving it downwards we very brutally influence the look of the material so you can see we have some color flickering here here I think it looks pretty pretty nice let's just 
I would actually even reduce the glossiness of, of that shader just a little bit more. So if we push this point a little bit upwards like here, that's definitely enough. Let's just keep it somewhere here and switch the color back to point 95. So if you're working on this scene yourself, if you're trying those settings yourself, I would suggest run, launching a test, test render at this point just to see how everything works all together, how the reflections um, work with the concrete material we've set up, how it all actually looks in comparison to the reference. But I think it's still a pretty, pretty good result as for this stage of preparing the shaders. We will fine tune all of them all together in the final step of scene preparation. So now let's move to the glass elements, which are very important and you will learn very soon why. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.